Members of the People's Democratic Party in Oshobo, Oshun State Capital and youth have protested against the verdict sacking Governor Dimola Adeleke as Governor of Oshun State. The Oshun State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal, in a split document of two to one, uh, is declared that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, should withdraw the certificate of return issued to Adeleke and issue same to former Governor Adigboyega. Uyitola. Now, the protesters bearing placards with inscriptions such as Oshun citizens reject Oyitola on mandate we stand. Um, Imole uh, has come to stay. The tribunal panel is not fair on today's judgment, amongst others. Meanwhile, Governor Ademola Adeleke has appealed to his supporters to remain calm, saying that he has appealed the judgment, assuring them that the injustice will be redressed at the appeal court. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ayo Deji Ologun, he is the Spokesperson Transparency and Accountability Group, TAG. And of course, joining us later is Hashim Abioye, he's a PDP attorney. I want to say thank you, Ayo Deji, for joining us. Can you hear me, Ayo Deji? Yes, I can hear you. Thank uh, you for having me. Good evening. Great. Um, I, I know that this is a, a, something that the governor, the former governor, had been speaking of, even... Um, after he had handed over um, to um, Governor Adeleke, he had continuously said he was going to take this matter to court. And here we are today having this discussion. Explain to us what you think, um, how, do you, how you think things will turn out. Because, I mean, Governor Adeleke is saying he's still governor. He's not going to leave government house. Of course, by the verdict of the courts and by the norm, um, governor Demon Ladeleke remains the governor until the decision of the Supreme I mean, Appeal Court is taken and, of course, up to the Supreme Court, which is the provision of the law. So between now and the appeal at the Appeal Court and subsequently at the Supreme Court, Governor Demon Ladeleke remains the governor of the state. The judgment of today, even though has been passed, does not validate the fact that um, the former governor, Itola, needs to resume back in the office immediately. I'm aware that Governor Ladeleke has filed a notice of appeal, which will be heard. And subsequently, uh, perhaps there will be another appeal to the, the, the Supreme Court, except either of the two parties decide not to appeal what the outcome of the appeal court will be. Having said that, it's also important to put into perspective the fact that politicians are most uh, the most um, hopeful people that you could ever come about. They, they don't give up easily, and they don't, they don't accept easily. I mean, they don't accept defeat easily. And of course, you, you, in politics, you don't, you, don't, you don't rejoice too much until when you have um, all the channels are I mean, exhausted for, for, for victory. In the case of uh, Madema Ladeleke, of course, the case was get taken to court by the former governor um, Oyetola, and he has been showing up along the line, assuring members of his party that um, the victory is coming their way. And what we have today is a reassurance of that hope that he has often talked about, relying on the provision of the law as far as the issue of voting and the use of both beavers in election is concerned. Today, the judgment of the court has been given two to one in the majority vote in favor of Oyetola. But of course, as I've said, the notice of appeal has been filed by Demala Adeleke, and we hope in another two months the court of appeal will give its judgment, and then whatever happens there will determine if either of the two parties will still move the case on to the Supreme Court, which is the terminating point of issues that concerns governorship election. Okay, I think joining us we have Hashim, who is a PDP attorney. Hashim, can you hear me? Hashim, can you hear me? I think you need to unmute yourself so you can talk to me. Can you hear me? Hashim, can you hear me? Uh, I think that you need to unmute yourself. I can hear you. Ah, perfect, great. Um, you obviously are an attorney, so you understand. It's Hashim, not Hashim. Hashim. Hashim? Hashim, Hashim. Hashim, okay, great, Hashim. All right, Hashim, you are an attorney for the People's Democratic Party. Explain to us what has just happened, even though, yes, we understand what the tribunal has said and the governor, um, Ayodele, um, I beg your pardon, uh, Mr. Adeleke has, of course, um, appealed or filed an appeal to the appeal court and he's saying that there will be some form of redress. Um, but look at, looking at what the petition of governor, former Governor Yetela carried, he the, it, it was on two grounds. First, he said that um, he claimed that the election was characterized by overvoting in 749 polling units and also argued that the governor, uh, Adeleke, had forged his academic credentials that he submitted to INEC to contest this election. 
Hasim, can you go ahead, please? Yes, okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, I will want you to read the uh, majority decision of the tribunal very well and the um, minority decision of the tribunal. So before you form an opinion, but uh, let me tell you straight away that as far as section 138 of the Electoral Act 2022 is concerned, Senator Ademola Adeleke remains the governor of Osho State until the Court of Appeal says uh, otherwise. Um, um, we have uh, from now, as allowed by the law, to, to appeal the judgment, uh, the majority decision of the Court of Appeal. Majority decision, quote and unquote, so there is something about that, but uh, we will be talking about it much later. But I want to say that uh, the decision of uh, uh, Justice uh, Kume and uh, that of uh, Chief Magistrate Rabi uh, was not signed in law. Basically, the decision was based on a controversial uh, primary, I mean, on a controversial uh, source. We have uh, a secondary um, source. We have a primary source. The primary source of evidence that was before the tribunal was detitioned by the majority, uh, I mean the chairman of the tribunal and the chief magistrate, that is member two. Um, uh, if we are talking about uh, controversial pieces of evidence, if there are two controversial pieces of uh, evidence, you don't prefer one to the other. There was uh, a Beaver's report gotten from the server by the petitioners, there was another one gotten from the uh, gotten from the server as well, issued by INEC. That's uh, so to tell you that there were two controversial reports from the server, and this uh, server report that we are talking about, they are secondary pieces of evidence. So in a situation like that, you go to the primary source. You are talking about the Beaver's machine reports, the report from the Beaver's machine, and you are talking about the server. Now there is a controversy about what is contained in the server report. Then you recall to the primary source. The primary evidence was clearly before the tribunal. The Beaver's machines were before the tribunal. They were demonstrated, and the tribunal in the judgment, the, even the majority decision, acknowledged that it was taken as demonstrated before the tribunal. Mm -hmm. by the provision of the electoral act 2022. Mm -hmm. So if it had been taken as demonstrated, so why go to, uh, why looking for another source of evidence to controvert the primary source of evidence? So can you use a secondary piece of evidence to negate a primary source of evidence? When the Beaver's machine itself was before the tribunal, and the tribunal granted an order to the respondent, to the second respondent specifically, that's Senator Ademola Adeleke, Okay. I, I, I think that we lost that connection with you. But I just wanted to ask, um, looking at the case that you've made, that there are controversies, two controversial evidences, and the fact that these came uh, from... The majority decision, the decision, uh, the report extracted from the Beaver's machine directly, not from the Beaver's this time around. I mean, not from the uh, server this time around. And the tribunal also jettisoned the Beaver's machine itself. So if the server report is talking about something else, and the Beaver's machine that you claim produced the, uh, the report in the server have been placed before the tribunal, then why preferring a, a secondary source of evidence, which is controversial, which was challenged, frontally challenged, over and above another one that was before the tribunal, in this case, the primary source of evidence, the Beaver's machine itself. So that's uh, uh, to tell you that the judgment, the majority decision of the tribunal uh, was one judgment with so many questions to be yeah. answered, and that will be done as the battle moves to the uh, uh, penultimate court, that is the Court of Appeal. So I, and I believe uh, the Court of Appeal will do justice to the majority decision 
uh, that was delivered today. And I want to say that if you go by the minority decision, if you look at uh, that decision and you go through it very well, you will see that it was very sound in law. It was clear that uh, you cannot prefer a secondary piece of evidence to the one that came from the primary source, okay. from the primary source itself. Okay. The minority decision clearly stated that as far as our electoral law is concerned, even though our electoral law has recognized technological device as part of the electoral process in terms of accreditation, in terms of verification and authentication of voters' uh, data, mm -hmm. you cannot in any way jettison the voters' register because the information on the beaver's machine or whatever technological device is to be deployed by INEC is contained in the voters' register. And okay. going by the step-by-step -step, uh, electoral process as provided for in the electoral guideline, beaver's machine goes concurrently with the voters' register. So okay. you cannot prove over voting without tendering the voters' register and without tendering the voters, uh, the beaver's machine itself. In this case, the, per the petition has failed to tender either of the two. Okay. Yet the tribunal relied on a controversial source to give victory to the petitioners. And one more thing is that the law is clear. That is the electoral act. You can check from section 50. Section 51. So you can you can you can read and go through it. You will see that if overvoting is established at all, if at all overvoting is established and it is found to be substantial, no return shall be made. If it is substantial, no return shall be. If it is not substantial, the court will go ahead to declare the winner of the election. I mean, the court will not. I mean, will count the uh, overvoting, which is immaterial, which is not substantial, as nothing at all, and the winner will remain the winner. But okay. if it is substantial, no return will be made at all. Okay. That, that definitely... All right, Mr. Abiyo, I, I, I would really like for you to hold on. Let's, let's get Ayodeji back into this conversation. Ayodeji, he's made um, very, a very interesting position and uh, talked extensively as to the evidence, um, the, the, sec the primary and secondary evidence that has been brought. He's talked about the majority and the minority in this particular, the votes that, you know, brought about this um, um, tribunal's um, position. Where do you stand on this? Do you totally agree? Of, of course, like, we, like the, gov the governor has said, he, this is subject to appeal. But let's hear your thoughts. Oh, of course, one can vividly understand um, the angle that Barista Hashim is coming from. He's a member of the PDP and is one of the, the legal team of that party. So his anger and his disappointment in that judgment is quite understandable. But then, as much as I'm not a lawyer, common sense would demand that when a judgment of this nature is given, especially where there's room for appeal, um, such a judgment should not be subject of dissection by, by lawyers or by ordinary persons on the street. What we should wait for is the filing of the appeal and then the decision of the judges at the appeal court to determine the grounds upon which the judgment was given at the tribunal and find whether the decision of the majority is sound enough to uphold what has been decided at the tribunal or otherwise. So I, I think it, it, it will not make such much sense to begin to dissect the judgment as, been, as it has been given today. A judgment has been given. And whoever feels cheated or otherwise has the room for appeal, which, of course, I am aware that the PDP has filed an appeal. And we should also put this into perspective, that for those who are thinking that votes were, were, were erroneously cancelled um, and those votes belong to an Adeleke, which give victory to Obutala, it should be understood that votes were cancelled across board. Votes were also cancelled from what Oyetola got in the general election. He had about 300 for something in the election, as, as announced by Heineck. And by the time of our voting was removed, I think he came down to about 314,000 today. And, and that of um, Adeleke came down to about 200 and something thousand. So for people should understand that the issue of our voting does not, uh, 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 does not um, involve only one of the parties. Vote, over voting was rejected across the two parties, both the APC and the PDP. And as such, the remaining votes were calculated and the judgment given. So whatever the outcome of today has been, the next step would be that the two, uh, uh, the, 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 the defendants in this case, um, that's the PDP and Adeleke, should move on to the appeal. He argued their cases before uh, the Lord Justices of the Appeal Court. And let's see if the Appeal Court will be upholding the decision of the tribunal or it will think otherwise. 
Um, I just want to dwell a bit on this issue of overvoting before we wrap things up, um, because one would look at the beavers and the, you know, the technology that's been introduced into the voting system as one that's watertight and hoping that these kinds of teething problems would not arise. Um, being that also, Oshu and Ikiti were some sort of a litmus test for the general election. What does this mean for the general elections in, in its entirety? Will we, uh, with what's happened now, will we also be afraid that we might have the, another case of overvoting and then, um, you know, tribunals going back and forth on this issue? I think there's one thing that the tribunal, our uh, judgment of today, has been able to give, which is giving credence to the voting power of the electorate. There's no way now that anybody can do manipulation in the election, and this will give confidence to voters, knowing fully well that their votes will count. The electoral law is clear that where there is an overvoting and election, such unit or such uh, polling booth results should be cancelled. And that's what the decision of the, of, the, uh, of the tribunal today has been. And as much as people think um, this is a challenge to 23 election, I rather believe that this will uphold the electoral tendency. It would allow INEC to sit tight and it will allow politicians to know that manipulation cannot be done in the election. Simply because even if you rely on using underage voters or you rely on writing figures from any quarter in your city room or anywhere, or you decide to bring um, on due voters to the polling unit, the beavers is clear. Once you are not captured on the beavers, you cannot vote. And whatever the figure of the number of people captured by the beavers, if it contradicts the total vote recorded in that place, it automatically becomes null and void. So this begins another awareness on the part of the society organization and of course to every voter that as much as it is important that we vote we should also ensure that at the polling unit where we're going to vote in 2023 we ensure that whatever the result of the beavers is is not in contradiction to whatever result is announced and that as that will amount to waste of effort and waste of vote so i believe that with the still time between now and the 2023 election coming up in february for INEC to perfect whatever they need to do to to, to re reject the confidence of the body in people and to also tell politicians that look enough uh, and then have come to 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 me to other means of fixing rather okay. than what the law makes provision for okay i just like like to let um uh, mr hashim to you know give a final word mr hashim going forward now don't forget that in Oshun State, there's been this back and forth between the APC and the PDP about violence and clashes um, back to back. I remember having a representative of the government and, of course, a representative of your party on the show, and it, it looked more like a, you did it, no, I did it. Um, and now with this that's on the table, how is the government of the PDP going to make sure that there is calm all through the land and there will not be any form of attacks, even though there's been a bit of violence? In, in your state? Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, quickly, I want to say that uh, reacting to the judgment in the way and manner it was delivered today does not mean uh, prejudging uh, what was before the tribunal because the judgment of the tribunal had been delivered, had been rendered. So I think commenting on it at this time does not mean that uh, we are prejudging what is uh, before the Court of Appeal. So that is when we get to the Court of Appeal. But as it is today, what we are saying is that uh, the majority decision was not signed in law at all and cannot be sustained on appeal. Uh, I want to quickly say that uh, the Bibas report uh, that uh, the APC relied on heavily was presented at the tribunal to be what it was not. And uh, the minority decision clearly dealt with that. But I need to quickly add that uh, PDP is a party of uh, peace. PDP, we in the PDP are peaceable, we are peaceful, and we don't uh, uh, subscribe to crisis in any way. So it is only the APC that parade talks and all that here and there. But I need to quickly remind my brother, my friend there, uh, Mr. Yologun, that um, uh, what he claimed to be over voting as, the, um, as contained, let me say, as purportedly uh, contained in the Beaver's report was not over voting, so to say. Okay. To establish over voting, we have, you have to establish over voting on the basis of the physical materials that were present at the, at the polling unit. Okay. Unless you can show that server was at the polling unit, we then have to you go. can now say there was open, if actually there was at all. So, but I tell you that uh, 
there was no overvoting okay. as presented by the petitioners at the tribunal. We, so have, to no we have to go. We have to go. We have to go, gentlemen. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. I want to say thank you. Ayo Deji Ologun is a spokesperson, Transparency and Accountability Group, TAG. And Hashim Abioye is uh, an attorney for the People's Democratic Party in Oshun State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with me. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And that's our show tonight, but we cannot leave you without bringing you the highlights of this week. Every Friday, we give you, uh, you know, a, a tease of what we had been talking about all through the week. So I'm going to leave you with that. But don't forget, you still have an opportunity to pick up your PVC before all of this is put to bed. And don't forget, not just enough for you to pick up your PVC, but be certain who you're going to vote for and why you're voting for them. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good evening and enjoy your weekend.